Um, my name is Aaron Wallace. I'm a product manager with Pitney Bowes. Uh, I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about a solution we have for uh, managing enterprise information and uh, metadata uh, as kind of a future. Um, uh, we, we work directly with Neo4j. We embed their platform inside of our platform we call Spectrum. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of that and uh, some of the reasons why we're uh, using Graph for MDM. So uh, if you guys have heard of Pitney Bowes, any of you, most of you pro probably would have heard of us in the context of mailing. It's about a hundred year old company. Uh, two thirds of the business is hardware that's mailing related. So sorting machines, scales, meters, these sorts of things. Uh, I work in the software division, which is a little different. It's considered the growth engine of the company. Um, identify is the specific sort of solution area that I work under. Uh, so we are, we're driving towards managing single customer views, um, reducing operational costs, optimizing uh, regulatory compliance. So the main kind of go-to-market focus we have is around the single view of customer, right, which is the MDM use case kind of at its heart. Uh, really about that ability to, to provide the access to the information that's both relevant and trustworthy, so it's not just about uh, all the power of the graph, but all the surrounding capabilities you need to make sure that information is trustworthy. Um, and, and the end goal, as always, is to be able to facilitate effective business decisions and strategy. So um, that's kind of what we're all about from a high-level use case perspective. Um, the way we view uh, managing customer information is kind of uh, just like everything else, technology related and business related, there's been an evolution, a pretty dramatic evolution in the last uh, 30 years or so, especially. Um, you know, way back when we first got into this business, it was all about large batch jobs on a mainframe, processing addresses, matching, deduping. Um, more recently, it's been about a, an enterprise level capability for customer data quality. So not just executing things in batch, but the ability to take the same kinds of capabilities and operationalize them through web services. Uh, profiling, ETL, you gotta be able to integrate with the various systems to pull data together into a single view. Uh, where we are today, kind of marked by this uh, little red uh, indicator here, uh, is in the business of customer information management, as I mentioned at the outset. So uh, this is where we've kind of really dove into the knowledge graph concept and begun uh, partnering uh, quite heavily with Neo4j. Uh, a good number of other capabilities that are relevant. You know, one of the newer things we're working on is dealing with unstructured data, natural language processing. So you treating that as a data source for your enterprise as well. Um, and then kind of where we see it evolving eventually is around uh, context management. So as you, a customer, reach out to an organization, whether it's an airline or a retail organization, having the person that you're speaking with or interacting with really understand the context of this interaction, right? I think we can all probably think of organizations that we do business with that do a good job of this. We can probably think of a lot of them that don't do a very good job of this, right? Whether it's your bank or an airline or uh, an insurance company. Uh, it's, it's really kind of staggering considering how many years people have been attacking these problems, how prevalent they really are. So that's where we really feel like people need to approach this as a discipline, right? When you're mastering uh, data across multi-domains, it's got to be something that's driven from the top down. And there's a lot of uh, advantages to how we roll these solutions out that the graph really uh, shines uh, when it comes to these sorts of things. So this is kind of how we've seen single view evolve, right? The, the basic capabilities that have been around for a long time are all about that kind of core profile of the individual. Well, that's interesting, but it's really, in the end, just an aggregation of, of data that still sits in isolation, right? You don't necessarily understand a lot of the relationships that are relevant. So the next step out is really to understand those relationships, whether it's something as simple as what products do they own, or something perhaps more complex, like what is their relationship to other people in a social network? What is their relationship to specific locations, or are they part of an organizational hierarchy? Is that relevant? Right, so that's sort of where, as we made the leap from circle one here out to circle two, where we started really investing in Graph and began our partnership with Neo4j. Uh, the next level out is all about uh, adding on interactions to that. So as people interact with me, uh, whether it's calling into my support desk or a salesperson or a marketing campaign or something more anonymous like a web interaction or out on social media, um, we really want to be able to fold that into a single view as well. And then ultimately, all of this has to drive towards customer-centric insights that we can, again, drive strategy, effective uh, strategy for our business and, and ultimately affect our bottom line. So. The key design principles, again, that kind of led us towards Graph and partnering with Neo 
are, are these, right? We, feel like, we really feel like the data structures are very key to unlocking the value and the information that exists across your enterprise. If you look at an enterprise of any size, you're talking about hundreds of data sources that need to be integrated typically for a single customer view. Um, we need something that supports agile development in a situation like that. Otherwise, you wind up with a, with a project that we see with a lot of sort of uh, competitive technologies that are based more around relational where you kind of undergo this waterfall cycle, right, where you're, you're, you're not really able to operate in an agile manner and feed back to the business your, your progress. Uh, graph, uh, because of the schema-free nature, the, the agility of the graph, it's really great at supporting a more agile process. So uh, that, on top of being able to, again, understand the relationships and being able to do that at scale, it's a big reason why we've partnered with NEO. So uh, we view you know, the approach on the left here as, as you know, in many ways an outdated approach. Again, kind of like Emil said this morning, I'm not going to suggest that everybody needs to just go home, go back and throw a relational out the door. But it does really struggle with dealing with some of these problems at scale, right? If you talk about um, you know, writing queries to deal with something like a social network, who are the friends of my friends of my friends, that gets really complicated, both from a, a code perspective, a SQL perspective, as well as uh, the ability to scale it. It breaks down pretty severely at scale uh, if you're talking about dealing with large data sets. So it also kind of forces you into this limited view of your data where you, you basically kind of have to know the questions you want to answer up front. Graph is really much more suited to an evolving, dynamic uh, kind of a paradigm. And it really allows us to drive these multi-dimensional views that are key uh, to the single customer view use case. So. Um, so that's a big reason why. Uh, back in uh, almost six years ago now, when we started looking at Graph, uh, we were mostly a data quality vendor at that time, and we decided we wanted to uh, get into the MDM market, very crowded market with almost all of the major enterprise software vendors you can think of involved in one way or another. Uh, we needed to do something a little bit different. So we were the first to market um, with a Graph-based MDM solution back then. Uh, you see a lot now of competitors as well as analysts kind of really getting the message finally about how important this technology is to MDM and information management. So we really feel like we were kind of on top of that. We initially began with uh, some use cases around more of network analysis type capabilities, but we qu quickly realized, and they mentioned Cisco in there this morning, we actually spoke to them early on in this and kind of learned a little bit about what they were doing with NEO and solving MDM problems and uh, really decided at that time that this is the direction we wanted to go. So. Um, why did we choose Neo4j? Uh, it's Java-based that fits our core platform architecture very well. It runs on multiple operating systems. Uh, very highly performant. Uh, ACID uh, transactional control is very key when you're talking about an operational transactional MDM system. Uh, they are far and away the market leader. They were then. They still are now. Um, and they really suit you know, not just the, the batch solution that we, we always need for cleaning up data in bulk, but also being able to operationalize and uh, pull some of these query interfaces out into real-time systems so that uh, as you're on the phone with the customer, you can see the relationships and some of this connected data uh, in real time. Uh, so the, the MDM solution kind of in the center here is really where um, you know, NEO is, is, is heavily embedded and integrated. We do have surrounding capabilities, and I want to emphasize as well that uh, as much as we love NEO and as great as it, as it is for MDM, uh, it's only one piece of the puzzle, right? You can't just store something in a graph and, and, and all of a sudden you have an MDM solution. You've got to surround it with capabilities for data quality, for ETL, for analytics. So all of those are things that we deliver uh, on this platform that we call Spectrum. Uh, so these are some of the capabilities. I won't read all these to you guys. This is mostly data quality related stuff, uh, whether it's matching, uh, validating addresses, parsing conjoined data in a single field. Uh, all of this is kind of uh, capabilities that we can set up front of populating a Neo4j database as a master data repository. We also uh, have recently built out an ability to virtually query from the graph, so we allow you to design virtual nodes that can reach out to other systems, so this uh, supports more of what's called a registry pattern with MDM. So the, again, it, it kind of suits the, the agile process, right? You don't necessarily have to pull every data source in at once. You can centralize certain bits of data, you can keep others virtual and kind of progress along that path in a much more iterative manner. Um, folding in the analytics is key, uh, ultimately, towards driving that insight and uh, strategy. So there's you know, different ways you can do that, whether it's sort of the classical aggregations, who are my highest spenders, what sort of propensity do they have to buy from a predictive perspective. Uh, we've got a very core set of geospatial capabilities as well for kind of folding that into the analytical process. And then the ones over on the right here are really the ones that are most graph relevant. So 
how do I understand influence within a network? Who are my most influential customers? Um, combine that with information about what they spend and you've got a pretty good, a decent uh, list for targeted marketing. Uh, recommendation engines, as you guys have surely heard, uh, are also really well suited for uh, Neo4j as well and for Graph in general, so um, key piece of what we do as well. Uh, use cases we're solving across a number of verticals. Again, most of this is oriented around single view to drive uh, strategic transformations, whether that's I want to improve the, the effectiveness of my sales, my marketing, my customer support. Um, all these are, are kind of key use cases we're solving uh, within each of these verticals. Uh, a few clients we have, I'm not unfortunately allowed to uh, show the logos here, but um, a, a financial services company here in the US uh, where we're driving single view, they, they wanted to roll out a fully digitized process on the web uh, for the first time really in, in this industry. Uh, it's a specific process that, again, I can't specifically state because it'd probably give it away. But um, they're using our graph-based technology and now uh, adopting it as an enterprise standard for other projects they're looking to master across multiple domains. Um, financial services, um, as ML mentioned this morning as well, great at fraud detection. Most of our customers that are in uh, the financial services uh, industry, uh, they're dealing with all these uh, ever kind of uh, changing regulations around anti-money laundering and know your customers. So. Um, we've got one customer that, that's integrated this capability to find those non-obvious relationships and uh, also detect what they call pseudo-customers, which are effectively fake customers that have sort of set up to, to propagate money laundering scenarios. Uh, and then a retail organization over in EMEA as well, uh, automotive manufacturer, uh, licenses a solution to drive uh, cross-sell opportunities as somebody comes into an actual physical location. Uh, they really struggled to know much about that customer as they kind of had them in front of them. So um, they, they integrated the Data Hub, which is the capability that's based on Neo4j, and are now able to kind of uh, reveal and uh, integrate some of that information out at the point of sale. We're getting a lot of great uh, feedback analyst-wise. Would I have a, about four minutes? No. Oh, really? OK. Um, I, I didn't think I'd been going 15 already. Um, Forrester has called this out as a leader in MDM, and it's, if you read the little bolded quote here, a lot of this directly relates to the graph. Modeling flexibility, ease of implementation, faster time to value, all very key differentiators for us. Uh, some others there, data quality is the business we've been in for the longest. Uh, and again, you know, surrounding the graph with these capabilities to solve an MDM use case. Uh, lastly, uh, we're, this is kind of more futures work that we're, that we're currently integrating into our next release of the product around not just using the graph as a physical store for the data, but using the graph as a store for tracking enterprise metadata, right? So again, as we all have kind of gotten into this domain, you start to see graphs everywhere. I think this is a really great example. If you look at the layout of enterprise information in any organization of any size, you've got hundreds of data sources, workflows, data quality rules, governance rules, uh, users, reports, dashboards, monitoring systems. And if you want to do something like analyze impact of changing a column name, or, or trace a lineage from a report field back to its original source, that, that's a graph, right? That's uh, paths through graphs, it's traversals. Um, the ability to kind of tag it with semantic information is also really great uh, for modeling entities as well. So um, I guess I'm out of time now. I would have showed a quick product demo. If you guys um, haven't had a chance yet, please come visit us at the booth and we can talk in, in more depth about all of this. I really appreciate y'all and the time. Thanks a lot.